Hello there, welcome to RTE Soccer Social. I'm joined in studio by Richie and Didi. If you were watching the Chelsea Champions League game on RTE or active or on social, you may have seen a poll we were running on the RTE Soccer Twitter account. It asked, who should Mick McCarthy start up front for the Republic of Ireland against Slovakia in the Euro 2020 playoff? Your results were, here they are, 61% went for Shane Long, 25% chose David McGoldrick, 11 wanted Aaron Connolly, with 3% going for other options. There were various suggestions here, uh, including Fergal Lynch, who asked whether we should bring Gary Doherty out of retirement, remember him, and Leishman, who's called for Tony Cascarino to come back in. <laughs> Callum Robinson was also suggested by some. I think he was in goal-scoring uh, form as well. Um, OK, uh, <laughs> Richie, Gary Doherty, you would have played with Gary Doherty. You I don't know think him. things are that bad that we yeah, need to bring no, Gary, Gary back. Yeah, Gary, get a kick out of getting <laughs> mentioned in it, I know. And he did uh, score some important goals for Brian Kerr in the past, but maybe we're pushing it. A long, long time ago. I, yeah. think, the, I think the Shane Long situation is intriguing because for whatever reason Mick at the start of the season emitted them all together from mm -hmm. the squad and you can you could there's a debate to be had as to whether he's good enough to start whether he's reliable enough in front of goal whether he's consistent enough that's whether or not to start him or not but to actually remove him from the squad I think was a big statement from Mick of, of yeah. something um, and he hasn't brought him in the squad in a long time so I think it'd be a huge call now for Mick to not only bring him in the squad but to, to, to start him. I think McGoldrick plays. Mick is mm. the type of manager that if, you, if you've done well for him and you're fit and available, he's going to go with it, particularly in a game of this importance. He said as much publicly. He was asked mm. several times about is he going to bring in the young lads, um, Adam Ida, Troy Parrott. He said, no, not yeah. for playoffs. Okay. I know my team. Yeah, um, it, I suppose, Didi, look, from the outside looking in, um, and you've covered many Ireland matches with us um, over the years and in this campaign as well, but the decision to have Shane Long out, you can see he's the public's choice this evening, 60-odd percent, say, put him in the team, never mind, have him in the squad. Um, like, are, are you surprised he's in goal-scoring form, that he's not in the mix? Well, if you look at the options, I think everybody or most people were surprised that he's not closer to the to the first team than, than he actually is. Um, in the past, Mick McCarthy was always somebody who, who trusted mm. his players and uh, was reluctant to change his mind. So I think he should be mm. in and around the team. He should certainly be in Slovakia uh, in March. Whether he's going to start, I'm, I'm not too sure. Mick Oldrick, I think, done ever so well for the team. Mm. I think he did well against uh, uh, Denmark in the last game. Connolly, you know... I ruled the other one out. Connolly showed that he's got a short fuse. You know, he showed a bit of an attitude uh, in the games he's played. So I think in a, in a game that might turn out to be pretty heated, yeah. I don't think he'll be a good choice. So I think he'll be between the first two. And as Shane Long hasn't been uh, in and around the team for a while, um, I fully expect McGeldrick to be the, 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 the centre forward on the day. But I would like to see Shane Long on the bench yeah. at least. OK, well, all will be revealed in due course. Um, we're going to go back to Stamford Bridge now and we'll get some reaction, of course. If you were with us earlier on, you will have seen uh, Bayern Munich beat Chelsea by three goals to nil in the first leg of their round of 16 tie. Uh, Tony O'Donoghue is with Bayern defender Alfonso Davis. Alfonso, congratulations on the result. Does that put the tie beyond doubt, do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, the team played well. I mean, the first half, you know, we we're trying to figure out how we can break them down, and we figured it out in the second half. So uh, we're happy we got the we got the win. What a season it's been, especially in the Champions League. Yeah, it's been good. Um, I'm just, you know, trying to implement what I know um, in training. You know, um, what I know from the guys on the pitch. So um, Champions League, you know, Bundesliga is all the all the same football. I think um, we just want to win every every game we play. Some would say that that was an even better performance than the 7-2 against Tottenham. Yeah, yeah, I mean, round of 16, you know, um, you just got to play smart, play, uh, play clinical. Um, and I think that's what we did today. Your assist for Lewandowski's goal. Uh, tell me about it. Yeah, um, I saw, saw uh, Coutinho, obviously, was on the pitch. I played a 1-2 with him, um, you know, because he had no option to, to go. to go, The only option he had to go back, so I tried to play a 1-2 with him. Um, obviously, the ball got scrambled and it got loose, and I just jumped on it. 
um, I try to beat my beat my defender. So once I was in the box, I knew the defender had to make a decision, either step to me or you know defend. So I try to. I just saw Lewandowski making a run back post, so I just try to pass it. He always makes those runs, doesn't he? Always makes those runs. Yeah. You've really settled into the the side. Has it? Have you found it easy? I mean, uh, a little bit. Um, knowing I have uh, players around me that can, you know, give me advice, you know, constantly. So, um, you know, it's not sometimes it's not too. It's not easy to uh, play left back, but I'm uh, enjoying the position. It could be a very special year for Bayern Munich. Yeah, yeah we're trying to, uh, you know, obviously every game we play, we try to win. Um, every tournament we're in, we try to win it. So um, from now on, our focus is uh, the next game. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. He's a TD and an incredible talent. I think we're seeing, you know, the emergence of, of a new star. He, he's a, a, astonishing. Yeah, he's a star in the make. I think I said it before, I've watched him now for a few months. Uh, I think he's the only player who played every minute since Hansi Flick took over the team. And um, I watched Alaba for a number of years now at Bayern Munich and I always thought it's very hard to play better than Alaba. Now this kid only played 15 or 20 games <laughs> and I think Alaba would, it would be hard for Alaba to replace him now. That's how good he is because he gives you so much going forward. Talk about him as a fullback, but you know, he, he, he never hardly makes a mistake going backward and what he gives you going forward is exceptional. And the other thing is when, when Tony asked him how easy he found it, now, when he first came to the club, um, he didn't go straight into the team. He had a few appearances as a substitute. He played quite a lot of games in the second team for Bayern Munich, which plays in the in, like the League One in the third division in, in, in Germany. Um, but he accepted it. He did his job. Came back to the first team, had a few substitute appearances. And now since uh, Hernandez and Sule got injured when Alaba was moved into the middle, he got his chance at left back and boy, did he grab it. Yeah, like Richie, just reading about it, he came from Vancouver Whitecaps. He's been a Canadian, a full senior international since 2017. And like when you watch the guy in action, like he's like an international sprinter. The pace is really remarkable. And, and I think it, if you were to try and describe the ideal learning environment for him, it would be a setup like Bayern in that there's a, there's a there's a really settled team there, packed full of really senior internationals, hugely experienced, and they're chasing for trophies, and it's an elite level. You compare that to someone like Rhys James or one of the youngsters at Chelsea. They're in a team which has a young manager, um, period of transition, a load of other youngsters, and a very different kind of a setup altogether. So there's a lot of things there going in his favour. His ability and his pace being the most, the most, uh, the most obvious, but on tonight's show, and we'll be talking about this fella for years. Yeah, and I suppose, look, if, you, if, you're, if you're good enough, you're old enough, like that's, like he's playing in the last 16 of the Champions League and, and, and excelling. Again, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's to, to, to convert a winger into a full back, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's difficult and you, you can, as I said earlier, on paper, you can look like somebody who's defensively vulnerable because that's not your obvious position or your natural position, but when you've got such a threat going the other way, um, and every opponent now knows this. He's not, he's not a surprise to anyone. I think people are going to be so yeah. guarded or so wary of getting at him too much because if you leave any space behind you, he'll punish you. And, and, and having Alaba next to him, having Boateng next to him obviously helps him because experienced Massive, players yeah. um, uh, can lead you and they show you where to go and, and, and they correct when you, when you do um, maybe are in the wrong position. But at the same time, when you go in there as a, as a young kid from Canada, you know, I can't think of any... Canadian players who played at a, at a good level or a top level, I think the biggest thing is to understand, to accept and to believe that you're good enough to play there. And some uh, players, it takes them six months, it, some takes two years, some takes five years. Some of them never believe they're good enough to play there and they're never going to make it. But he, he came, he went in there, he got his, his chance and he made, from the first game onwards, he made the left-back position his own. Mm. Um, and he chose maybe that American Canadian way of life to maybe not, not think about things too much. Um, but it's just refreshing because he just, he just plays his natural game um, and he's got so much ability. And we've seen today um, the goal, the way he sets it up, he still had a lot to do when he squared mm. that pass. Um, yeah, it's just a joy to watch. Mm. Richie, I just want to come back to Chelsea for a moment, you know, because, OK, there'll be, there'll be a reaction against the team yeah. tonight and Lampard and, you know... OK, Ziyech is coming in the summer. I'm just thinking a couple of things. Can, can Lampard use this with the board to be able to say, right, guys, we need, we need some, some reinforcements here? Or do they just accept that this was always going to be a longer-term plan 
that it was always going to take time with those young players. You'll get the inconsistencies that they've had all season, bad home form, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of that is true. I mean, he said himself tonight, which is stating the obvious, that we, we know we're underdogs we, and no one questions that and there's a reason we are. He's up against one of the superpowers tonight. So I don't think it would be realistic for them to go into this expecting to win. They would be knowing that if they were to get a result, it would be the standout result of their season. So there'd be realism there. What we don't know is how patient and pra pragmatic and realistic are they upstairs in Chelsea. Whether they're willing to say, yes, we've youngsters, you know, yes, we've had a transfer ban, it's not ideal, mm. but we shouldn't be producing performances like this. We should be higher, we should be further along than we are. Um, those conversations, we don't know how they're going, but I wouldn't be too bold if I was Lampard using tonight as a, as a reason to go at the board saying, you need to do more mm. for me. I'd, I'd, I'd be a bit more yeah, sheepish okay. at that. Than that it's if a, it's a three year deal he has signed, yeah. you know, I suppose, uh, as you were saying when we were on RT2 earlier on, that, like, okay, get into the Champions League again. Mm. Like, that's, that's where Chelsea yeah, need to they, be. They do. Um, even if they don't, I expect him to, to, to stay there and keep course, his job. Yeah. Uh, we must not forget, and, and to his defence, we've got to say Loftus Cheek, Hudson Odoi, Pulisic, not available tonight. Mm -hmm. So there are three, you can't say three can't top yeah. or four top players who, who couldn't play tonight. I think they've got a, they've got to, um, in defence, they've got to massively restructure. You know, they they haven't got a keeper as it stands now. They've got a 38 year old in goal who might be able to finish the season, but you don't want to go into the new season with a 38, 39 year old Kepa. Is he good enough? Remains mm. to be seen. We don't know. Everybody's raving about Rudiger, saying he's our number one centre-back in the Euros. I don't see what other people see. Christensen, I think, is a very talented player, but he, he lacks help. Aspilicueta coming to the end of his career. So I think in defence they, um, they need enforcement and uh, at least two or three players. OK, let's get some more reaction from Stamford Bridge and we'll hear from a member of the Chelsea team. Here's Olivier Giroud with Tony O'Donoghue. Olivier, would you say that the, the tie is beyond Chelsea at this point? Excuse me? Would you say that the tie is beyond Chelsea at this point, 3-0, first leg defeat, and you have to go over and try and get a miracle, basically? Um, you mean for the second leg? Yeah, obviously it's going to be difficult to go through, but you never know. Um, uh, tonight, uh, Bayern play... Uh, a great uh, football, you know, and they, um, they've they been very efficient, especially second half. At the other time, we had the feeling that uh, we could match uh, match them. We had good opportunities also. Um, but the thing is, as I said, um, you, you, you spend a lot of energy, you know, uh, running after the ball when the day of the ball. Uh, they play very well, you know, and um, the problem is when we, are, we, we get the ball back, we uh, maybe uh, mm, I miss some personality and, um, and energy, obviously, because uh, you run a lot to get the ball back. So um, you always can improve, but I want to say tonight, Bayern was was too good for for us. You have to be uh, honest and. Um, yeah, uh, let's uh, go uh, to Munich um, with um, with Proud, you know, and um, and we will try to to score and uh, and to win at least that game. In the first half, though, I mean, you, you had a chance of Mason Mount uh, cross the ball. Uh, nil all seemed like a a, a positive half-time score, in, in the hope that you could have improved in the second half. Uh, yeah, we are, we had a few chances in first half. Uh, by the way, if I go a bit early on uh, Mason's cross, I think uh, I'm offside anyway. So uh, yeah, it was uh, very close. But um, uh, as I said, we uh, we had a uh, good hope uh, for this first half. But maybe a second one. Uh, um, I mean, when they score early in the, uh, in the second half, uh, two goals in three minutes. Uh, after you know, psychologically, is is it was uh, it was hard, you know. So after you know, we just uh, we just try to um, to come back in again, but they were they were too strong, you know. So it's going to be difficult. Jorginho will miss the second leg. Marcos Alonso, obviously, uh, as well. So it really will be tough. Yeah, it will. It will. But you know, we without believe. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you can't do anything. So we will go there with um, 
with, uh, as I said, um, with with uh, with our pride, you know. And um, but will it help you maybe concentrate on achieving a top four finish in, in the Premier League now? No, we are talking about Champions League, so second leg, uh, obviously, it's going to be <laughs> very difficult. But now we need to focus uh, first on, on the Champions and uh, Premier League, and uh, we need to finish in the top four. You know, that's the target, and uh, we need to put uh, things right, uh, yeah, from Saturday and uh, bounce back as soon as possible. Olivia, well, thank you. One, one, okay, that's Olivier Giroud with Tony Odono. Just before we go, gentlemen, I just want to get your, your views on, it's a very topical thing, and particularly today, Tuesday, with the news from the Irish government recommending that the Ireland-Italy rugby match does not go ahead on the weekend after next. The coronavirus, I know it's very early to be talking about this, but do you feel that could threaten, say, the rest of the Champions League? Could it threaten Euro 2020? Well, I suppose if a Six Nation fixture is, is at risk of being cancelled, the, the reasons you would cancel a fixture like that also apply to the Euros fixtures. It's like it, it, a, a sporting event is going to encourage or be the reason that there'll be mass movement of thousands, tens of thousands of people from area to area. And the Euros, of course, is being played in numerous areas. So to answer your question without knowing the details or how things are going to go between now and then, you would have to say that there are serious conversations happening somewhere at the moment to see what is going to be the plan or how can they monitor it from here till the summer mm. and at what point do you have to make the responsible decision, the, 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 the health-based decision, not the commercial decision or yeah. the sporting decisions, but how you how do you prioritise the health of everyone throughout Europe? And I don't know who, I don't know how you go about making that decision, but I would assume that's being discussed. Mm. It's got to be. Well, if... I haven't seen anything official from UEFA or the host venues. What is yeah. there, 12 cities? Yeah. But that's, that's, you know, various different yeah. jurisdictions, governments. Yeah. You were talking here earlier on about, you know, could you play as Inter Milan are doing on mm. Thursday night, play the matches behind closed doors? Mm. Like, it would be absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. if you're talking about this deadly virus mm. and health issue... Well, I think the sport health comes second. Yeah, absolutely, and the health uh, of the sports people and the fans is, is yeah. paramount, and and that's that's got to be first, and that that's got to be the uh, priority uh, regarding Ireland Six Nations game. I suppose it's because uh, the opponents are Italy, yeah. and the outbreak seems to be worse um, in Italy, in Europe um, at the moment. So, Inter Milan, that uh, Inter Milan, as you said, uh, play behind closed doors on Thursday. So there's no reason why. It can't spread to other countries and, and maybe affect other uh, countries as, as badly as Italy. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed uh, that we do get it under control. We had a few cases in Germany where uh, they put these people in, in quarantine and, and, and it seems to be pretty quiet and safe for now. Um, but um, you obviously don't know because I think the guy who brought it into Italy still hasn't been found. So you yeah. don't know how many people he's been in contact with. Um, so we just have to cross our fingers, but um, yeah, strictly speaking, there's no reason if you call off a Six Nations game or, or play a, a, a Europa League game play behind closed doors, mm -hmm. there's no reason why it can't happen to a Champions League game or, or the Euros. Yeah, well, the rugby situation is certainly a, a fluid one at the moment. I read some comments from uh, an International Olympic Committee official today who said the IOC will make a call on the Japan Olympics in around May with two months to go. But look, it's, it's just, a, as I say, a very uh, fluid situation. That, though, is all we have time for on this edition of Soccer Social. My thanks to Richie and to Didi for joining me here in studio. We will see you all again soon. Good night.